everyone, we're back with a very short special video about some of the characters that are in Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. Now, in our last chapter, chapter eight, spoiler alert, we learn that Percy Jackson is the son of the sea god. And we learn about a couple other of the Olympian gods. But who are they? What do they do? All of that. We're going to do a quick run through of what the Olympian gods' names are, what they do in Greek mythology, and what their symbol or animal is. Now, as a reminder, this is all Greek mythology, which means it is made up stories that were made up a long, long time ago to explain things such as science and how the world works. Couple things, they have many different gods, but the main ones are the 12 on the Olympian Council. So they're the ones that we have the cabins for at Camp Half-Blood in our story. So we're going to go through them plus one, because he's pretty important. And we'll start with the Lord of the Gods, Zeus. So these pictures that I'm going to show you are of different sculptures and things that were made in ancient Greece to celebrate these characters. So Zeus is the Lord of the Gods. So he's the kind of king and in, in charge. He is in charge of the sky and his animal is an eagle and his symbol, a lightning bolt. So in his hand right there is what they call his master bolt. Number two, our next one is Hera. She is the goddess of motherhood and marriage and her animal is a cow, a motherly animal, also a lion and a peacock. Many different things for her. Next is Poseidon, who in our story is Percy Jackson's dad. Poseidon is the god of sea and earthquakes, so he rules over water. His animal is a horse, and his symbol is a trident, which is that three-pronged thing behind him that he's holding. And that's what showed up uh, above Percy's head in the story. Next is Demeter. She is the goddess of agriculture. She has two symbols, the red poppy and barley. She's holding a fruit in this statue. Next is Hephaestus. He is the god of blacksmiths and he would create the god's weapons. So he helped create that master bolt that was Zeus's most powerful weapon. His symbol is an anvil, which is a type of hammer that blacksmiths would use to make weapons. And his animal is a quail. Athena is the goddess of wisdom, battle, and useful arts. So Athena, in this statue, she's holding a spear, has a big shield and that helm on that someone would wear into battle back then. In our story, she is Annabeth's mother. Her animal is an owl. So owls are supposed to be wise. Our next goddess is Aphrodite. I'm sure you've heard of her before. This is Miss Aphrodite. She is the goddess of love, and her animal is a dove. Her symbol is a magic belt that made men fall in love with her. Next is Ares. He is the god of war. This is Ares. His animal is a wild boar, and his symbol is a bloody spear. In our story, Ares is the father of Clarice at Camp Half Blood. Next is Apollo. Let me find him. Here is Mr. Apollo. He is the god of music, medicine, poetry, archery, and bachelors, which means guys who are not married. 
He has a lot of jobs. He has the animal is a mouse and his symbol is a lyre, which is this instrument right there. Looks like a little harp. His twin sister is Artemis. She is the goddess of maiden girls, which means girls who are not married, and hunting. So she has that bow behind her. Her symbol is a she-bear. Hermes is the god of travelers, merchants, thieves, and messengers. His symbol is a catechus, which is this little thing right there. It's that kind of cross with the snakes on it. Sometimes you see it in um, different medical fields. And his winged helm, so his winged hat. And sandals. He's not wearing any in this statue, but usually he has winged sandals on. Dionysus is the god of wine. This, uh... Statue doesn't look like anything like him in our story, does it? <laughs> his animal is a tiger, and his symbol is grapes, because that's what you use to make wine. All right, lastly, we have Hades. Hades is the god of the underworld. In Greek mythology, the underworld is where... Um, souls would go when they died. Now, Hades did not have a seat on the Olympian Council, so the Twelve, but he was very powerful. His symbol is called the Helm of Terror. Ooh. It was, a helm is one of those helmets that, like, Athena was wearing in her picture. It's um, something they wore into battle, and it would scare his opponents or it would also turn him invisible. Now, one other thing that they talk about in our story is the big three. So the big three are Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. They are the sons of the Titan, Kronos. And he was the lord of the Titans, which were the not-so-great guys who, in Greek mythology, ruled before them. So they have the most power and the most powerful children. All right. So I hope that this helps you kind of get some background on a lot of things that is happening in this story and can give you a little bit about some of our characters that we are meeting in the Percy Jackson book. They each have a cabin at Camp Half-Blood, and now you know Maybe why there's an owl on Athena's cabin. And why Apollo's looks like it's singing. <laughs> Alright, we hope you enjoyed this and learned a little bit more about that. And next week we'll have more chapters of our book. Bye everyone!